Hello and welcome to Webinarians to another Weberful episode of Crichton Live on Fuse Logic <laughs> TV. And uh, again, I just keep hauling my friends out of their normal day jobs just to join me and kind of kibitz yes. for a little while. My guests today are Kelly Chemo, right here. Vice President, Thank you. and John Beckett, the President of Axe Productions, considered one of the premier live event and live concert production companies in Western Canada, and in fact, recently now international, because you were That's right. up in Inuvik and you've been down to Turks and Caicos, so we'll get into that. Today, we're going to talk about what it takes to be uh, a live event and live concert production company. Now, when you go to places, well, here, let me, let me, let me, uh, let me take you there and give you a, a little taste of things. Uh, we'll look at the website taste right here. Right? Here we go. If you want to give us that look, there we are. There's the Axe Productions website. We're, we're going to be perusing through that, but I think to sort of set the tone of, of what we're doing, uh, let me bring back some memories for you guys here. Uh, we'll show this kind of stuff here. This is the oh, kind of stuff are... that you guys do. It's the big stuff yeah. with the big screens and the trusses and all of that. We're going to be uh, you know, talking about how you pull all of this stuff off and what it takes. Why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, Axe Productions? Because you guys were always Axe Productions, but you've been around forever. So tell us, uh, tell us the company story a little bit. There you go, Johnny. Uh, 1995, uh, we started a company called Angel Audio. And uh, what that was was a couple of freelance sound engineers, being myself and another gentleman, uh, were doing a whole bunch of rentals uh, or being asked to produce events and look after the production needs of those events. Uh, we didn't own any gear at that time. And um, it started to really build up to the point where it made sense for us to go to the bank, get a loan, and, and buy some gear. Uh, that ran uh, it, uh, its course for five years or so, and then we uh, were lucky enough to hook up with the guys from Axe Music. They uh, invested a bit of money into the company, and in 2000, we uh, moved the name over to Axe Productions, and here we are 16 years in, and things have grown considerably. Now, how many gigs would you say you guys are doing uh, doing in a year? Five to six hundred. Um, when I did, number. actually, I did a count. It was um, six hundred and forty-seven we did last year. Like you know, big events. You know that number? Yep. Well, that's pretty impressive. But that's, yeah, because sure. aren't you the numbers guy, or he's the numbers he, guy? Uh, we kind of no. Share there's the numbers, um, but... actually there's a computer program that <laughs> oh, shows yeah. up. <laughs> yeah. We categorize when we do our billing under a certain category, and then. It's Fits out the number. I think the best story, and frankly, what I should have done for this show is simply take the camera on location and left it there in front of your offices for for the day, because to work with these guys is unbelievable. There, there are always twelve conversations going on at the same time, about, and sometimes we do it with each other. Well, let's 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 kind of work so, into this, and we're going to talk about right. the mechanics of what you guys actually do, what it all takes. And if you could uh, go to the laptop here for me, yeah, and then we're going to roll a clip picture. that we're going to talk to. Now, this is is Rexall. And uh, this, uh, this is a large-scale production right here. I mean, if you follow my cursor around, you'll see uh, we've got everything from trusses with lights that we're going to talk about, a video wall back here, of course, all the lighting, the staging, the back line. And for those of you that don't know what back line is, that's the equipment, the musical equipment and so on that might be needed by a local performer. So what I want to do is roll this clip. This is a time lapse of a Rexall setup for the YC conference and it's fascinating. If you roll out, we're going to speak to that. And you guys walk there us through go. what's going on. All right. This is a large event we do uh, every year at Rexall called YC, which stands for Youth Concert, put on by the Pentecostals and a company called Extreme Dream. Yep. And uh, this is really what it takes to turn Rexall from a hockey rink into a concert venue. Um, well, first they cover the ice. They're covering yeah. the ice. And this is before we come in. Yeah. This is the Rexall staff right now, right? Right. So they so kind of in the staging there, yeah. working on the score clock, coming down, doing uh, something to the score taking clock. Taking the lights off, they want to take it up higher. Oh, they took all the advertising off yeah. it as well. Yeah. All oh, right. Okay. And uh, uh, it's amazing how fast people move they're, they're, when they're working. It is. Here. Well, they get paid by the hour, so that's right. <laughs> <laughs> we saved a lot of money <laughs> yeah. on this setup. <laughs> okay, so let's go. Okay, now we're getting here. Serious we go. Now here. we're starting to move in. All right. So. And this all takes place in a day. We get it up in a day. Wow, is that right? What yeah. time do you start in the morning? Um, first one, first truck loaded is at eight a.m. Yep, and we get out of there about midnight. It's that a little, day. it's a little slower for our setup than a typical concert setup that's traveling because we're bringing all the elements together. Um, you know, on a, what they call a one-off. Yeah, so it's yeah. not like it's a touring thing. We're putting it all together right on the spot there. We you kind of have drawings. We draw it out. We know exactly what equipment that's going to be coming in. Right. And then we just got to get it all up, and then there's a 
points. Well, now the lighting which, light show is starting. Now the light show is going in. We've got the front of house down. down the and this is still the first day, house. by the way. This is the first day. First okay. day, because okay. you'll see at the end where, you know, a guy walks around and it's over, and then we all come back. There you go. Yeah. That's kind of, you know, we're saying goodnight right now to everybody. And now they're putting it up while we're all sleeping. They're like little elves over there. <laughs> little elves isn't that they cute? just come in and all of a sudden they see oh here we go morning just came by yeah. and now of course the lights are going the fog is happening again hey there's a guy stealing something no i'm just kidding um oh, look i see you there john oh he put it you're back fast. it's okay yeah you're fast mover so all the chairs came in sound checks are probably starting to happen yeah uh, the Dad's next thing crew. you'll probably see, because this is moving pretty darn Okay, rapid. there you go. People there are in the now. people, yeah. So all of a sudden, we go to 17,000 people stuffed in the round, which Big is concert. a... concert. Wow, that's amazing. But now you're actually into the show. Now, how many people does it take to operate a show like that? And I guess we, we should also mention there's video and camera. As a matter of fact, if you want to pull up the, uh, the laptop here, this is a good shot from behind... Uh, the setup, and as you can see, we have a jib cam in there, which is this guy down here. Uh, let me take that back just a bit. But we see how many people does it take in a show like this to to actually pull it off? Well, Michael, it takes um, 27 to do this one. Oh wow! You okay. know, operators and all that. So there's a it's, it's a seven camera shoot plus the camera support, and then you add on top of that, uh, you know, half a dozen audio, uh, a few lighting guys. Now, when you get, quickly, yep. let's walk through the process now. Someone comes to you, and uh, you uh, you are at square one. All they have is a, is a, is a concept for a show, and, and they have a venue. Mm -hmm. uh, let's let's talk about it from the point of view of maybe uh, someone who is doing a large scale event or an event of any kind, because you also do small scale events That's as right. well, right? Because you guys have done. Shaw, you've done uh, the Jubilee, singing Christmas yeah. Tree at the Jubilee, for example. We'll take a look at a few of those photos as well. Um, you've done pretty much every venue in the city. So if someone comes mm -hmm. to you who's not quite as experienced but has an idea, walk us through the process. What happens? Go ahead. Oh, okay. Uh, but what happens? Here we go. You know, I, I know that uh, Michael was saying the amount of events we do from Rexall to uh, Jube, small and big. Um, our biggest success and what we love to do is every event is important mm -hmm. okay so you know we want to let the client know that even if it's a little event it's still going to get our full attention and um, we take it that way and so they come in and you know we start out with a with a, a notepad and then with a notepad we start out you know where is it going to be at how many people are going to attend and, um, and then we start working you know what do you guys want what what's the budget going to allow Right, and, right. And that kind of determines what equipment we're going to bring in and what they're going to use. So um, we just uh, we sit there, we mark it all out, we place it on down, and then the customer leaves. And then we, we like to assure the client that we'll take care of, you know, their needs because so many times they come in, they're scared, they don't know what they want. And um, what we like to do is walk in and make it easy for them and comfortable and leave away kind of, you know, happy and excited and not so intimidated and scared at at this big project that they're doing. Right, now you've done, in, in terms of planning, for example, let's take a look at uh, this photo right here. It's kind of interesting because it's before mm -hmm. anything happens. This is your setup for Lady Antebellum, and you've done Lady Antebellum, and you've done Keith Urban in this venue at West Edmonton Mall. So that's yes. that's quite a that's quite a lot of work, I would imagine, to bring that in and use that rink area again. That, that room has its own uh, issues. Uh, there's certain guidelines that you have to work by when you're working at the mall. One of the, one of them is that uh, they don't like you moving in a ton of heavy equipment uh, during store operating hours. So that show that you just looked at there started at 6 a.m. and uh, the mall was busy there all the night before, laying in plywood and carpeting the the rink. And then uh, our production crew comes in, I think, at 5 a.m., is it, Kelly? Um, yeah, it's actually 5.30. There you go. Because they all complain. We want them in at 5. They want to be in at 6, so we compromise at 5.30. <laughs> and then, uh, and that's a bit of a rush to set up because usually those shows are early as well. They're not evening performances, of course. Yes. They usually, uh, you know, doors are at 2, shows at 3 kind of thing. So it's a lot of work to get done in a short period of time. But uh, those things have been very successful at West Edmonton Mall, by the way. The turnouts mm -hmm. have been in the you know ten thousand person bracket. They figure has has passed through the the, the area yes. overseeing that because it, you know it's multi leveled there, and uh, they've sold a lot of CDs by doing that. 
That's um, really what it's about. They bring in those acts, and it's a promotion, obviously, to move product. Well, merchandise, yeah. right? The whole yeah. merchandise thing is, of mm -hmm. course, what drives the a Keith lot Urban of. The Keith Urban one was fantastic. I think you were at that. Yeah, one. I was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah he's uh, he's got a lot of fans. That was the longest sound check in the world. Now, if, if you don't know what a sound check is, the band comes in and mm -hmm. they check their sound. But uh, Keith wasn't doing it. It was obviously his guy with the guitar. But his that took like about what two, two and a half hours, I think, or something, to do the sound check. Or his something. Uh, his tech is very concerned about that making sure when Mr. Urban walks out there, it's exactly the way that he likes it. To Absolutely. And I'll be honest with you, that room is so hard because of the glass dome. Very echoey, and so it's, they really it's a challenge. You're it really right. stretching your um, abilities, your technical abilities at that point. And, and, from, and I think what's important in terms of, of what differentiates you from a lot of the providers of this sort of production service, because it is a, a smaller industry, if you will, and of course there's very large-scale companies everywhere in the world, but here I think one of, one of the things is that you come from rock and roll initially. Right. So your experience in terms of staging and lighting and, and uh, sound especially has been has been tempered and, and fueled by the the number of, of years of experience you've had with really high high level production, which I, I would suggest that's still important in all the corporate work you do, right? I, I think that uh, what that does for us, it gives us an edge in the corporate world. That um, I think that if the the technicians and people that have come just from a tech uh, corporate side mm -hmm. um, haven't had to deal with the speed and the pressure. That comes along with doing large-scale rock rock and roll events. So we take that into the corporate world. Our engineers are faster. Our approach to it is uh, we get it up and working very quickly. Um, and that's not to slag other companies. They have their own ways of doing things. But uh, I think that uh, just by bringing those elements together from a lighting perspective, audio perspective, and video now, that uh, we can execute very quickly. Now, one interesting story, and we're going to go to a clip shortly, but I want to ramp it up. Uh, one of the, and, and I had a chance to be involved with that as well, uh, the challenge was that uh, the client wanted to stage a, a fairly significant event in an mm -hmm. underground parkade. Tell us oh, that yes. story. Go ahead, uh, Johnny. Uh, what happened was, okay, so we did it at City Center Mall, and then, you know, we walk in, we have the meetings, and... Um, they go, okay, where do you want to have this event? And they go, well, we want to have it down in the parkade. I'm going, oh, yeah, that's going to be fun. Because we all know how um, <laughs> short the parkades are, you know, low ceiling and everything. So we come walking in there and going, okay, yeah, not a problem. We can do it. That's always our philosophy. And um, I know so many times we can transform a room and just make it look spectacular. And um, you know what? Give us the challenge. I love it. Well, if we do, so, yeah, if we could take a look at the yeah. photo here, you'll see that this is the the actual one of the things that uh, you guys invented called the truss bar, which is actually yes. using lighting truss with plexiglass on top. And what else did you do to make this thing work? Uh, the photo's a little blurry. Well, but we have um, we have like truss warmers. They're called. So yeah. we have lights inside the truss that changes the colors of the truss yeah. and just kind of gives it a nice warm look. To it's it? definitely a unique look that you won't find in uh, every event, that's for sure. And that was a very mm -hmm. large bar. I think that bar was 90 feet long. <laughs> As so you can was, see, yeah. That was a big bar we put in there. And then so, you know, once the lights were turned off and everything was on and we had lights everywhere, this looks spectacular. We'll talk a little bit about the importance of maintaining inventory, of bringing new inventory in. So we're going to take a look at things like your your new Hotsi Totsi Digi Design SL48 oh, yes. venue console. You see, yeah. I can say that right. Pretty, Look at yeah, that right off. The, impressive. You see, I practiced that for 12 hours before I came here. And also <laughs> you know, things like the new video fly pack as well as the truss bar. We'll take a closer right. look at, at the insides of, of what it takes to maintain inventory and stay yeah. on, on, on the edge of things. Let's take a look at the setup for what was the uh, underground uh, underground sound uh, party. And it oh, will be before we uh, featuring a very important artist, by the way. Who was Will I Am? That yes. is correct. That's right. So it was a, a big. It was a very big event in a very quirky location. This is uh, the setup <laughs> for your enjoyment at uh, Edmonton Event Center, or, or sorry, no. Edmonton City Center, Center underground yes. parquet. This is what Axe Productions had to do to put it together. Enjoy.